All right, so you're welcome back to your most authoritative business and economic analysis program live here on TV3. Thanks very much for making a date with us on the program. Later in the program, we'll be bringing you some analysis on the stock market as well as the commodities market. We'll find out what the price of gold, cocoa and oil is and what its impact is on the local economy. Now, is your business at a stage where your old communication methods just don't work anymore? Do you need business communication solutions that can help you move your business seamlessly from face to face? Then you need Etel Tigo Business. Etel Tigo Business is here to help your business adapt to the ever-changing environment with total communication solutions. You have the flexibility to choose from a wide variety of communication services to suit your specific needs at every single stage of your business. Now talk to Etel Tigo today on 055-999988. That's 055 Nine 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 eight eight, and let them help your business evolve. Airtel Tigo Business, making business simple. Right. So to the news that we've all been talking about, uh, it take uh, it took center stage on Friday with a release by the central bank announcing the revocation of uh, three hundred and eighty six microfinance including microcredit companies. Now, about 30 directors today, we've been informed, about 30 directors and shareholders of uh, the microfinance institutions are currently facing prosecution for the various roles they played in the collapse of the companies. Well, that's according to the central bank, which has strongly defended its decision to revoke the licenses of close to 400 microfinance and microcredit institutions. A lot of questions have come up after this, uh, issues about job losses and what have you. Uh, today we caught up close with the head of other banking institutions and supervision department at the central bank, Joseph Amwa Ewa, uh, and he's been explaining a, a few things to us. Take a listen. What has been the reaction following Friday's uh, release? It's mostly been good. It's mostly been good. Um, it's been expected for a long time. Uh, you know, we've had these issues um, with MFIs, licensed MFIs that have had difficulties uh, for a while. And uh, for, for, for the longest time, uh, customers have been worried, uh, not uh, able to um, have these uh, deposits they made to the institutions back. So in, in essence, uh, there's been problems. Mm -hmm. There have been challenges of the sector and based on that, there's been expectation for some solution. Mm -hmm. So essentially, the announcement was welcome, uh, very welcome in the sense that um, the institution had to be, um, um, the insolvent institution had to be removed from the system. We needed a clean uh, system. Uh, we needed a, a way to reduce the insolvency. We needed a way to give um, uh, hope to the, to the savers. We needed to salvage their deposits, which is how government stepped in. Has it taken the central bank too long to take these actions? Um, the time is about right. Uh, we, we go way back. Uh, the institutions have had challenges uh, from a supervision point of view. Uh, we've jumped in. We've done our work. We've done off-site and on-site supervision. And we pointed out where these institutions have gone wrong. Where they have breached uh, regulation, we have, we have pointed them out. We have, we have pointed this out to them. Where they have um, uh, breached statutes, we have, we have applied penalties. Uh, where uh, we had to uh, put in season disease orders, stop them from uh, worsening the situation in terms of uh, further deposits taking and uh, making loans and so on. We have, we have put in these season disease orders to control the situation. Uh, we worked with them to put in turnaround plans. We worked with them to find a way to introduce new capital, uh, bring in new investors, uh, uh, re re reorganize, restructure, recapitalize. Uh, and that is the process we, we, we've had with them for the last couple of years. It's, it's taking a while, mm -hmm. and we've come to a point where uh, we have to uh, use the, um, um, uh, the trigger of insolvency in the Act 930 to make this de determination. Breaches, these uh, illegalities, uh, if you like, this untoward actions the taking place. Of years, the How many years? Or two, or two couple of years, uh, from 2014, uh, 2015. Uh, but you have to remind yourself, um, regulated financial institutions will always breach one thing or the other. It's up to um, uh, supervisory enforcers to ensure that what is wrong is fixed. What is wrong is picked up uh, and, and, and we, based on that we caution, based on that we direct, based on that we punish. On what so, basis does the central bank give out licenses for microfinance? Uh, the, that, 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 that goes back. And that, let me um, also mention, uh, we have been giving licenses um, since 2016. 
and uh, and therefore we have so not given that. The yeah, that, that has been a hold on to licenses, right. and, um, um, and, and and so we have to say that the licenses that were issued were under the old uh, uh, banking banking act, right. Act C73 from two, uh, 2004. Okay, so the deposit taking um, institution were taken care of under the old act, Act C73. The non-deposit taking, the microcredit, the money lending companies were under Act 774. So essentially, these things were done in the past. And, and coming by, uh, forward to 2016, we found out there were too many. We needed what was to, the criteria then? Well, essentially, uh, to get a license, uh, you needed to have a business plan. You needed to apply for permissible activity under the, the sections that we had. Uh, based on that, you have to show us a capital plan, how much capital you're investing. You have to convince us you have the minimum capital required. And you have a business plan to, to execute that, that, uh, that, that capital plan. So uh, uh, we looked at the business model. We looked at the 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 uh, we looked at the the people behind it. We did fit and proper. You know, we had the criteria to ensure that people coming into the space had you know uh, 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 the right background, had the right experience and qualification, and also had had behaved well in terms of propriety, in terms of not causing any problems at all. So fit and proper was part of it. The capital plan was part of it. The business model. You know what market segment they're going to focus course on, and so on and so forth. So put together, uh, and then the um, uh, a projection, a business plan to project over the next five years. Is it feasible? Will it make money? And and, and so on and so forth. Okay. So and in taking this recent action, what did you find out specifically with regards to fit and proper testing? Were people fit and proper in terms of the, the capital required to start the business? Did they have that capital? What exactly did you, did you uncover? Okay, uh, you know, you do fit and proper uh, test at the point of licensing. Okay, but after that, the circumstances can change. After that, you, they can misbehave. Uh, so in the law now, if we determine that uh, um, uh, after passing them, after approving them, they, they've changed. Their character has changed, their behavior has changed. We're able to jump in and take action. So fit and proper is at the time of licensing and at the point of adding new people, new shareholders want to check his background new director want to check his background and so on and so forth. But after that, once they are approved, down line when we see that the, the, their behaviors are changing, we have a basis to determine they are no longer fit and proper. Bank of has authority on that section uh, uh, 689 uh, of the new act to be able to take the, make those determinations. So, so, so which of the breaches dominated your actions? So essentially we saw um, uh, corporate governance breaches uh, behavior uh, of, of the key parties, uh, behavior of their related parties. We saw monies moving in between them. Uh, to, 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 in line with the law, uh, they, there's a limit to what they can do. In line with the law, uh, there's, a, there's a limit on related party transactions. Uh, we found out over the period they exceeded those limits. Okay, so that, that was part of the problem, um, essentially. Essentially, yeah. <laughs> Why will the central bank <coughs> want to essentially um, separate itself from all that has happened. Is the central bank saying that it takes no responsibility for what's happened over the years? Uh, the central bank shouldn't take uh, responsibility. Why so? What we have said is uh, from the moment they are licensed, we have uh, re regulations, we have processes. Uh, we, we, we make requirements of them to submit uh, returns to us. Uh, these returns come in weekly as in liquidity, they come in monthly as in balance sheets and so on. They come in quarterly, as in profit and loss statements. And then around those prudential returns, we have ratios. We, we check those ratios and make sure they are compliant with requirements. All right, so we do this work, and occasionally, based on the risk profile, you know, we jump in to do uh, um, on-site uh, exam, which takes us to the institutions. So we're able to visit, we're able to check the books, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, on-site, we have the ability to confirm, you know, figures they've sent to us, and so on. So for a while, uh, we found out that the, the returns were coming in and we had issues with the returns and we were able to uh, get them to fix, to make those corrections. So uh, we've done off-site, we've done on-site, we've done proper corrective actions. We've jumped in to, to apply penalties and, and get them to correct the, their errors. You are suggesting that you did your work? We did our work. We did our work. As I said, every regulated financial institution occasionally will make mistakes. Everywhere around the world, you give them a license, you give them a body of rules, you have the capacity. We, we have. have we, the yes, we do. To go around yeah. the country we and do. to supervise we, we do. these companies. We do. We have to admit that with the sheer numbers that 
uh, have been licensed up to um, the end of 2015. Uh, that stretched our supervisory resources a bit. But from 2016, for late 2015, in 2016, for, for a big part of that, uh, additional staff were added. We had the bank recruiting staff. Uh, so we caught up. We caught up uh, with, with in terms of numbers. In terms of numbers, uh, having uh, uh, more people recruited, people with the skill sets required, people with some experience in the, uh, uh, examination, auditing, and so on, to so have joined the team. So I, I, Central Bank cannot admit uh, a responsibility for that. Uh, the share numbers uh, were, were, were licensed uh, for a while. Supervisory challenge, uh, um, though, uh, you know, following these institutions, uh, we've caught up because additional staffing have been have been have been given to us, and we have trained, we have skilled them to be able to help us uh, do this. So, as we speak, we have um, um, uh, good numbers on the ground uh, to be able to uh, um, 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 focus on these institutions in an offside manner, given the data that comes in, given the analysis that is done. And then we we'll follow up where we see a signal of wrongdoing, signal of breach. Then we we'll jump in with the, uh, um, those supervisory interventions. And then when it's not working, the problems will become structural. You know, then we put in these um, um, season disease uh, um, actions. Beyond that, then we move into resolvability. Uh, you are at the place where you need additional capital. So we encourage some of them. We, we explore that as well. We encourage some of them to merge. Um, I'm happy to note that a few of them were, you know, not the numbers we wanted to see. A few of them were able to talk to each other and, and, and have majors and so on. That were approved by us. And, and, uh, quite a number also had the opportunity of introducing new capital, new partners, new investors, and so on and so forth. So we, we, we exhausted that. Uh, we have to keep in mind these are private limited liability companies. Uh, under the law, we don't have um, liquidity uh, support for these institutions. Liquidity support under the law is for banks which are the major players, the significant financial institutions. For these smaller ones, given their numbers and given the way the law is constructed, we don't have you know, liquidity support we could give them. We have to work with them in this manner. We have to guide them. And then when they were airing, where they were going off, we have to bring them back. And, and, and that's what we'll be able to do. For the most part, I pointed out the, the, the um, uh, governance, governance issues, governance challenges we've had, behavior of some of these people. Um, I pointed that out. We've, we've seen those. Um, we've mentioned that uh, over a period, uh, some of them have been handed over to law enforcement to look at their conduct. We've done the supervisory part, the regulatory part, um, um, and so on, which we are happy with. How many of them? In terms of? Have been handed over for uh, prosecution? Um, for investigations, for, 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 for law enforcement to look at them, about 30. About 30. about 30 in the beginning, and there's a process to be, be added. Microfinance. Yes, yeah, microfinance. Microfinance. Uh, shareholders. Microfinance operators. Operators. Owner and shareholder, key, key, you know. Uh, because at the point, uh, we began to see this conduct or misconduct, uh, if, I, if I, you know, misbehavior. And we, 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 once we determine those, we, 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 are not, we are not empowered to investigate. So we pass on, them on to law enforcement. Uh, I would like to, to see a lot more prosecution. I know that the, the work is far advanced. I can't give you the numbers. You, are, you probably have to look for the appropriate law enforcement uh, to speak with. But we, we saw these things and we, we knew they were going beyond you know, regulation and supervision. We saw misconduct and misbehavior. Uh, so we pass them on to law enforcement to do their work. They have to get some evidence. They have to do further work. They have to confirm these things. And if they can build dockets, they can, they can build these. Uh, dockets against them, uh, given the work that an um, attorney general would do to advise them, then they, uh, we, uh, we may advise uh, they, they are making progress, and uh, I'm sure very soon they'll, they'll come out with some of the work that they've done. Right, so there's on the one hand... A couple of them are in court. Mm. Let, me, let me mention that. A couple okay. of them are in court. How many are in court? Uh, a couple. About five are in court. Right. Where, where they've done their work and documented the offenses, built up evidence, and built a case against these institutions. Uh, I'm, I'm told that about five are in court out of the 30 that went to them first. So there's on the one hand what is proper, what is necessary to be done, and on the other hand, the repercussions, the consequences of your actions. Yeah. Did the central bank take into cognizance the cost-benefit analysis of this exercise? Okay, I, I, we've done that. We've done that. Uh, essentially, if these problems are not solved, it could get worse. Uh, if we didn't do it now, it would totally get worse. So uh, the, the, we know that fiscal resources are being used for this. Uh, it's costly. Government would have loved to use these resources for social intervention, other social interventions. How much so. are we looking at? Uh, we're looking at about 900 million. Uh, that's the fund that has been provided by government, 900 million Ghana City. 
Um, that is the total envelope of resources that have been given to us. Uh, we are working within that, and we think that if we're able to complete this, we'll be able to, you know. So there's cost, and, uh, and again, the cost is the benefit, all right? Uh, we have to talk about the several thousands of, um, of uh, vulnerable, vulnerable uh, members of the society whose uh, their livelihoods are, are, are threatened by the conduct of these institutions. Uh, they spend years looking for their money, asking questions and so on. So people have suffered. Uh, we know that people have died. Because we are talking about the, the, the segment of the population where people can die over uh, 200 cities, can die over a couple of thousands of, of, of cities. All right, so this is life savings. Uh, we've heard about pension funds. People have taken their pension money and invested in microfinance, you know. So there's, there's pain there. So there's a big cost if it's, if it's not tackled. Uh, obviously, uh, more people will die, which is why government thought uh, it was the right time to make this intervention, to uh, attempt, uh, make the attempt to salvage the deposit, and hopefully um, um, jobs will be saved, hopefully uh, lives will be saved, hopefully um, a number of these people, if they have uh, their money back, they can invest in their small businesses. Uh, hopefully, um, 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 will, uh, they'll be saved and they'll save their jobs as well. You've talked about jobs being saved. It's a bit striking uh, for you to, to say that. I mean, we've already witnessed um, the closure of a number of yeah. uh, banks who've had their licenses re revoked, people have lost their jobs, and then we're witnessing, you know, close to 400 microfinance uh, yeah. microcredit companies also being closed yeah. down. Yeah. And you're saying that jobs are not being lost? Uh, some jobs will be lost. I'm focusing on the institutions that, uh, well, I'm focusing on the depositors first. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're able to retrieve their money, they have their small businesses, they employ people. So on, on that, on that, in that direction, um, they'll be able to do their work. Mm -hmm. They'll be able to um, 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 save their businesses and employ some. Okay, the big question about the institutions that have been resolved, that are going to lose uh, uh, people. That's a, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Uh, what we have said is that uh, some of these people uh, who uh, are, are losing their, their jobs uh, um, have skills, they have credit skills. How many people are we looking at here? Estimated um, 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 3,000 or so. 3,000? 3, 3,000, yes. Estimated about 3,000. Okay. So well, the, that's the, that's uh, assuming that each of the 347 or so companies employs how much? How many people? Uh, you can make the, you can calculate it yourself. Okay. Uh, you know, between 10, 20, 30. It depends on the size of the operation. So there are big ones. About 3,000 people or 3,000 jobs. People. About 3,000 jobs. Okay. You know, and, and mm -hmm. you know, some so we have very big ones that are all over the place. Mm -hmm. That have employed quite a number. Mm -hmm. We have very small ones who have just. Uh, uh, who have employed uh, very few people. So in average... And then we're also looking at the trickle-down effect. That's right, that's right. So the story there is that uh, some of these people have skills. Um, having worked with a financial institution for a while, uh, they have skills. Uh, we envisage that the, the receiver, you know, for the work that is being done now and for the foreseeable future, they're they are going to need some of the, these people, all right? Uh, CBG. CBG has been named as the paying bank. CBG for this special operation, for the time that it will go on, CBG will, you know, uh, have to find, what will, is finding a process to employ some of these people, even if it's short term, whilst these payments are, are, are being done. Uh, for the broad ma majority of them, uh, they have skills, they can tell so and so on. But I have to uh, make a correction. Uh, we know that the, the bulk of the institution we are resolving, all right, um, have, have already been closed down for a while, going back to 2013, 2014, coming forward. How many forward. of those were closed? Um, 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 155 MFIs, okay. and then um, uh, 30, 39 um, uh, money lending companies. You okay. know, so MFI 155, uh, MLC, MLC, hang on, MLC is uh, 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 10, 10 already close, okay. already close. So and then you revoke the lenses of how many? Uh, three, 386 in total, 347 um, MFIs and 39 uh, money lending companies. That's some significant job loss. But the point I'm making is that uh, some of them have closed since 2014. So we assume that some of them will have worked into other jobs, will have found things to do, and so on. So let's, let's, let, let's remember that, you know, uh, <coughs> about half of them already closed. Mm -hmm. The other half is the one we are worried about, that uh, hopefully with the work that uh, PwC as uh, receivers will do, um, uh, CBG, 
All right, you're still watching Business Focus, your most authoritative business and economic analysis program live here on TV3. We've been very heavy uh, tonight on the revocation of some 386 uh, licenses uh, belonging to microfinance and microcredit institutions. The central bank took this action on Friday, and you just heard from the, the head of other financial institutions and supervision department of the central bank, Joseph Amwa Ewa, speaking there uh, early on today. And he's making some uh, a lot of, um, you know, Interesting points there about job losses, about 3,000 jobs likely to be lost uh, ar ar arising out of this uh, revocation of lines. Uh, a, a receiver has been appointed to look into uh, this issue. A number of issues are also arising uh, out of this, and, and we'll be bringing it to you uh, here on TV3. Uh, still ahead, uh, we'll be speaking to the... Uh, microfinance institutions network. They represent the uh, microfinance institutions. Yao Jemfi is executive director. He joined us shortly on Skype uh, to do some uh, analysis on this latest action by the central bank. You're still watching Business Focus. We'll be back shortly. All right, so you're welcome back to your most authoritative business and economic analysis program live here on TV3. This is Business Focus. Thank you very much for staying uh, tuned with us here on the program. Tonight, as I mentioned, we're staying heavy on the central bank and its latest action. The central bank, as you may be aware, has revoked the line census of some 386 microfinance and microcredit institutions. The central bank has been speaking about this latest development, what the repercussions are on the economy. Joining us via Skype for a reaction is Executive Director of the Microfinance Institutions Network, Yao Jamefi. We need to get uh, their own perspective uh, to this uh, story. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Jamefi, for your time. Um, did this come as a surprise to you? Um, to some extent, yes. Um, we have engaged the central bank quite a long time now, and we knew this was uh, coming, but uh, we're not sure of the numbers. And that's what came to us as a surprise. You knew that most of your members were engaged in related party transactions, a lot of uh, illegal money trading, and a lot of um, breaches to the central bank's regulations and acts? Um, in terms of uh, regulation uh, uh, breaches, yes. But uh, illegal businesses, we are not sure of. Because most of these things, is just the central bank that have um, previewed to those ideas. Um, but for some, we know they were engaged, warning them in terms of um, compliance activities and then um, other things that they have to do. For instance, uh, meeting the minimum capital and then making sure they stay, they stay solvent were things that the central bank engaged in largely to discuss and give them a period to meet those um, conditions. What about this latest action surprises you? Is it the... The, the numbers, the numbers uh, of revocation that surprises you or the action in itself? Yes, I think, I think it's the numbers. It's the numbers. We were not anticipating that we'll have that large number going off down. Um, I think in our quest, we're thinking, yes, some will go home, but not largely these numbers. And I, I, again, the surprising thing is that some few years ago, some of these institutions were doing very well. And so today you wake up and then they are all down the drain you ask yourself what has gone wrong. And honestly, we are, I'm so yet to come to terms with this, this whole thing. You mean you haven't still woken up from your sleep? Yeah, I'm, I'm finding it difficult to understand for some of the institutions. How many were you expecting? Uh, I think I was expecting around 100. I think those that were badly distressed. But not knowing that along the line, some, some were also becoming um, we can we can as the day goes by. Are you suggesting that the central bank was a bit too high-handed in its, uh, you know, decision? No, um, I think if you look at uh, what the reasons they've given so far, uh, in terms of the breaches of the regulation and then insolvency and liquidity issues, and then uh, many meeting, uh, most doing some bad practices and others, I believe that yes, it's, it's fair. But just that um, I, was, I, was, I wasn't sure of these high numbers. What do you think is going to be the impact on your members, first of all, and um, on, on jobs as well? What do you think is going to be the impact? Um, I think on the, on the membership, it's, it's a sad thing to lose some of them. Honestly, um, I, I understand um, some have accepted it willingly, but there are some that are still thinking, how did I come to this stage? 
And those those moments are really sad moments for most of our members. Um, for those that are staying, I know they will also be extra cautious. And they, they will live with some level of uncertainty for a period before they get over this. If this has happened to a neighbor who is doing virtually the same business as me, then eventually I, I must also be very careful. Um, it can be positive and negative in that direction. Um, Definitely, some will, will take it as a clue to be serious with the business, but others will also may, may think that, oh, it can happen to me, so let me do my normal way of doing the business. Now, on the, on the side of employment, um, give and take, these numbers will definitely go down with about 2,000 permanent staff. But for the uh, temporary staff who are mostly full staff, I'm not sure of the numbers yet. But for the permanent staff, around 2,000 will go down. The, the central bank is projecting about 3,000 job losses, direct job losses. Then that's, that's, that's a huge number. You know, this day and age, it's difficult to come by jobs. And of course, the, so the trickle-down effects will be massive. Massive, knowing the marks that they all feed. And again, um, I think what, what is going to happen, which I foresee in the near future, is that a lot of these institutions, if they do the right things, will expand quickly to absorb some of these people back into the system. You know, at the microfinance level, we do a lot of trainings to enhance the way these people operate. And I believe that most of these people go in some hard, serious skills that they cannot just go and then waste them in their houses. So I believe that if we are able to stand up to the game, expand most of our business, because at the end of the day, we still have to do the business of financial inclusion. And this is the time for uh, these, the remaining institutions to be very serious with the game and expand very quick to make sure they also absorb the, the, some of the job losses that we will be having immediately. It's, it's, it's refreshing to hear you talk about the issue of financial inclusion, which is still an ongoing process. What do you think this will do generally to um, banking confidence? I think initially, we definitely will have some level of setback and questions will be asked. But I believe that by, by the close of the third quarter, I think things should start picking up. Um, I, I strongly believe that um, this is a, a double-edged issue that we are dealing with. Of course, if the, the very bad ones, if they were allowed to stay within, then definitely to affect the whole ecosystem. That on the other phase, if they also leave, then they will be short of numbers to deal with the, with the population. But again, uh, as I told you, if, if we can actually um, do a better job by expanding quickly, then uh, bigger institutions with, with uh, few branches can do bigger uh, programs for us. And I, the idea of financial inclusion will not be that much lost. Let's talk about depositors' funds. The central bank has assured, uh, through the appointment of a receiver, that uh, they are going to collaborate uh, with the financial institutions to ensure that every PESWA is paid upon verification. Um, are you going to comply uh, to collaborate with the receiver? Definitely, definitely. We, we need to make sure that the system regains its um, trust. And therefore, once the government has come to our aid to pay off the depositors, uh, we, are, we are very much happy. And you see, one thing that I'm also very joyful about is the creditors themselves when they mention that the creditors will also be supported or dealt with by way of paying them. I think that's, that's a welcome news because people are putting their money and then if they lose everything, then what becomes of the sector? So for me, even though we, we, we are going to have some level of shocks, I think all the slum laws and we can always regain our strength and come back very well. Because without, we still have a large informal sector and without microfinance, the business of uh, serving everybody in, the, in, this, uh, in the corners of this country cannot be done by just the commercial banks alone. Crystal Nine was fired after her boss felt she wasn't needed at her bakery. Having worked for three years with her boss, the 28-year-old graduate of the University of Professional Studies Accra felt she had acquired enough expertise to start up something on her own. I worked with my certificate for a couple of um, months However, I wasn't pleased with the dawn to dusk sort of lifestyle. It was draining me and I felt I wasn't given enough 
as compared to my output. So I decided to go solo. On a great day, I can make as much as 2,500 to 3,000. And on a really dry day, maybe 1,500, 300. I don't go about, yeah. So far, she's been able to train over 100 people with home baking tuition Ghana. It depends on your determination as a student, of course. And um, I have a very flexible timetable. Talking about cream cakes, it takes you two days. The first day is for baking from scratch, and the second day is for decorating with whipped cream and buttercream. And when we're talking about um, heavy cakes, not dessert cakes, we're talking about wedding cakes, we're talking about anniversary cakes, cakes that are expecting to last longer than a week. I would say that it takes about three to four days depending on how um, fast the student picks up because the fondant work is pretty tedious so we have to take it step by step and the very last day that is after the first two days is for sugar crafts. Velvet Cup Tales on the other hand is getting numerous orders for several occasions particularly bad days. I like to say that I work with my customers budget I wouldn't want to give you a fixed price because some students are sharper than others, so I would make it easier for you as well as it is for me. So um, I charge from a range of 500 CDs and above. But how easy or difficult is it starting up a business in Ghana? Crystal tells me she doesn't fancy office work. For the meantime, her certificate can rest. Initially, it wasn't easy because, well, I, I am a brilliant student and they felt like, oh, so after all this, Crystal is now selling cake. People did laugh at me at the beginning, but guess what? I made it! <laughs> and who's laughing now? <laughs> According to her, business comes with good and bad days. Voila! And so this chocolate fudge cake is ready for delivery and the client is paying some 400 Ghana cities for this and it comes to delivery actually. And Crystal tells me everything in there is local. She doesn't patronize foreign staff for her, you know, work. And so she wants to promote made in Ghana goods. So can you share with me a worst experience? My worst experience this year was uh, Valentine's Day. Um, a customer brought in a, a rider to take some orders for him and I also thought it would be quick if I gave him some orders for uh, the same vicinity that was in Laboni and he had a, an accident he had a collision with another vehicle and everything over I think roughly 20 to 21 bouquets he had a very big box so everything just ruined so that was around 400 cities worth of cakes that were just gone at that time, I, I, at that moment, I broke down, but I'm over it, so it's good, yeah. Her 65-year-old mother, Kate Markin, believes the time is now for parents to allow their wars follow their passion. This modern world, you can't force any child to do. Sometimes they'll try to please you, but halfway through, they come back and track whatever they want. You can't force your child to do what you want. Yes, she has to choose her own career. Okay, so I think it's my first time seeing a cake like this. It look a bit weird. If sorry, I'm not getting the right word. I agree with you. As you can see, it is far from being perfect. It is not perfect at all. But I'm not looking for perfection. I'm looking for um, the customer to have that experience. You know, they see this cake coming, they go like, mm. you know, typical Ghanaian who go like, mm, what is this? And then they take a bite and they go like, wow, who did this cake for yeah, you? Yeah, I got, I got That's concept. basically what I'm looking wow. for, and I always. Hit it right on the spot. She had a word of advice for the youth. It's not easy, but it's worth it. I started with 50 CDs and I'm here. So there's nothing like I don't have enough capital. Even if it's two CDs, you have a phone. You have, if you're on Facebook, if you're on WhatsApp, it's not the time. It's not, the, this is not the time for you to take pictures of yourself and try and maybe attract other people. I always want to be remembered by my ability to think because beauty is ephemeral so if you're out there and you have the mind you have the ideas don't sit on them you can go out even if you have to be a porter for two days to raise your capital do it you won't regret it wow this is nice 
I think it's time for me to sign up for a week, you know, tuition here. And so, bosses, I'm asking for a week off. <laughs> so, if you don't hear from me, I'm trying my hands on something new uh, to be a better person, a better husband. And so, from Tishu Nungwe Estate, uh, Kristen Yan came your way with a baking business. She's really doing great. And she just started with 50 Ghana cities. What's your excuse? I think it's time for you to also do bigger things. Go out there and be great. Thanks for watching. For the mover segment, and he's always eaten, but you've got to be inspired by Christelle's story in the face of rising job losses. You've got to identify what you can do as an individual uh, to build your own business. You're still watching Business Focus, your most authoritative business and economic analysis program. We're going to take a short break. When we return, we'll bring you some more stories. HLTGO Business is here with the world of total communications solutions. HLTGO Business, making business simple. By popular request, Superform Network in partnership with the National Theatre of Ghana presents Accra Weekday. Learn French in three weeks. Conjugate. Uh, today. To mama. No for four. I feel so. How to be rich in one week? Obiat na trotro mwa fi the time I own all sister sister brabo. Kwa na me money be Saturday 8th June 2019. 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Kwa na me money be here. Watch for Peter right my way. Yes, Pierre Hector, Pierre Hector, how? Hey, you said you were here. Okay, you're on the DW. Pierre Hector. Hey, what is also in Fiamma? Oh, because you're here. Because you're here, Michael. Hey, I'm going to go to Michael. 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 I'm going to go to Tickets are going for 60 Ghana City single and 100 Ghana City job. Ticket hotline 0266 267394. This production is supported by Accra Weekday. The hustle is real. Right, you welcome back to your most authoritative business and economic analysis program live here on TV3. So we're going to do uh, the stock market analysis now. I've just been joined us here by Winslow Sakifio uh, with First Bank Financial Services. Winslow, good to have you in the studio. So quickly, let's start off with the stock market. Uh, I believe the financial stocks are beginning to pick up. But yes. what does the story of th close to 400 microfinance companies been shut down what does it mean to the industry you know if you you take it from last year mm. uh, we had uh, banking reforms and all that uh, it brought a lot of uncertainty onto the banking sector and uh, this year i would say that there's been some amount of recovery mm. and with the microfinance announcement it's likely to reverse some of the gains we have made this year why is that so uh, you know investors thrive on uh, confidence in the market mm -hmm. and for some of them they link all the financial sector together so whether they are banks or they are savings microfinance and savings and loans yes so for them is the financial system and one would have an impact on the other and that is how they look at investments in the banking sector so what do you foresee in the, in the near uh, future uh, i think for some weeks we would have a lot of instability on the market and uh, things will quiet down a bit but for now there's a lot of uncertainty so there I is mean, every indication that uh, they're going to continue with the savings and loans yes that is uh, the strong indication we've been given and it looks like that would also feed into the kind of uncertainty we face now so the gains we have in the market which is mostly driven by financial stocks, mm. we might lose some of that gains going forward. Mm. So what are the expectations on the stock market for next week? So next week, uh, 
if there wasn't the microfinance announcement, I would have said that uh, we'll see a gradual recovery from the financial stocks. But mm. for now, there will be some amount of sell-off. But mm. in the next few weeks, the market will pick up again. Mm. Mm, I see. Let's quickly talk about the commodities market. Yes, uh, crude. You know, uh, crude uh, got to 70, and mm. then we saw a reversal taking place. Uh, currently, uh, the reversal is gaining momentum because uh, because of the trade wars, we don't expect demand to go up because there's a lot of uncertainty China and the, Ameri and the Americas. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we don't expect uh, crude depletion to take place. So we have a lot of inventories, especially for gasoline, mm -hmm. and that would beat the price down. Mm -hmm. uh, gold, on the other hand, you know, because of the uncertainty, the price of gold is uh, picking up strongly. and. It's all related to uncertainty in the U.S. market and Brexit, which is also creating some uncertainty on mm. the market. Mm. For cocoa, uh, the story is not so good because the price is falling. Uh, you know, we expect supplies to pick up, but there is an indication that we might not get the production we want. Mm. That is supposed to impact the price positively, but it's having an adverse effect on prices rather. Mm. Thank you, uh, Winston. We've got to go. Thank you very much, Winston Sakifu, for your time. Winston Sakifu is with uh, First Bank Financial Services, helping us do some stock analysis as well as uh, commodity market analysis. That's all for Business Focus uh, tonight. My name is Sparkus Yasari. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, we also stream live on Facebook. For more business news stories, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com. You've got to stand by now for News 360 with Alfred Okanse and uh, Natalie Ford, so hopefully...